What's going on guys? Today we're gonna be talking about lighting and how to do epic, oh man. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be good at lighting. Let's give a warm round of applause to Eric Fickenworth. <laughs> Woo! He is a professional Pilates instructor. No. <laughs> I'm a gaffer. Uh, also known as a chief lighting technician. Gaffer, it's, it's a funny nickname because if you look it up, um, it might say a grumpy old man. Eric likes to do like these crazy setups with 20 lights. Why don't you just turn on the light switch? Why you gotta make it so complicated? I think the dog just farted. <laughs> I mean, we could turn on the light switch. You wanna see what that looks like? Yeah, let's do that. I think lighting is overrated. You don't need all this crap. Yeah, sure, it's, it's a little bit dark, but that's what the ISO button is for, dude. You just crank that up. Your job is basically useless. <laughs> If you're trying to make things look more cinematic or you're trying to get a particular look that maybe clients or other people will like without having to think about liking it, like they'll just look at it and go, oh, it looks great. They don't have to think about why they like it. That's my job. Okay. Well, I'm about to throw up looking at this frame, so let's turn those lights back on. Today, we're gonna take a step back and just see what we can really achieve with just one light source. And we're gonna go with the Aperture 120D. This particular fixture is LED. We're choosing to use LED. It's a newer technology. It's much more common. It's really interesting to see this transition we're going through nowadays where LEDs are, you know, dominating most of a package. What's the most common LED light you see on like big productions, like the ones you work on? Sky Panel S60C is the most common fixture. Oh, darkness, my old friend. But in this video, we're gonna dial everything back. Now, the reason why we're going with Aperture 120D, it's a very clean light right out of the box. It looks very natural, especially when you consider the price point. It's very powerful. It's pretty modular as well. So you could run it off a household socket in a house, but you could also run it off V-mount batteries. You can switch out the head with a reflector. You could also throw on a Fresnel. You could throw on a dome light. And that's what we're using right now. And if you have just one, you could do a whole lot with it. And also we're gonna be using one of these dishes. These you can find on Amazon for like 20 bucks and when you're getting started you definitely need one of these. We got a gold reflector, a white bounce. It's basically a cover that you can invert so you have a black side or a negative fill and also a silver side and also a little floppy frame with diffusion. So we're gonna take you through 10 lighting setups that you can achieve with just a few pieces of lighting gear and here we go. So the first setup we're doing is we're just gonna show what a Fresnel lens can do unmodified on someone's face. Harsh lighting. By adding shadows, you're adding shape. You're modeling, essentially adding depth. There's Eric and there's the light right at about two o'clock, slightly above eye level. When the lights come in and slightly from above, it tends to look a little bit more natural because the sun always comes in from above. You can also make many modifications to this setup. I'm gonna take this reflector and just bounce around a little bit, see what we can get. Let's move on to lighting setup number two, which is probably the most common. We're gonna switch this Fresnel attachment out for a softbox. We're gonna introduce our lighting technique called the Rembrandt. So this just pops right off. Here's our softbox. When you're doing this stuff, don't rush because that's when gear can get damaged and when you're working so closely with other people, they can feel, you know, if you're stressed. If you're working with someone for 12 to 14 hours, the last thing you want is be around a stressed person all the time. And here we go, we're gonna strike it on. Boom, there we go. We have the light fixture set up in the same spot, but with a soft box on, so the light's hitting much softer now. Now we're gonna go for the Rembrandt effect, which is gonna be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm just gonna take this and slide this over. Even just moving the light like a foot or so, it can make a pretty big difference on how much shadows it casts on his face. This is a pretty frontal here, but as I slide it back, you just start seeing more of those shadows and depth being created. So you could always slide it back and forth and find your sweet spot. If you know Notice on the opposite side of my face, there's kind of a little triangle underneath the eye on this upper part of the cheek. Now that's called a Rembrandt because in his paintings, that's what he would do. He would paint it so that there was a little triangle of light on the opposite side of wherever the main lighting source was coming from. So we got our camera and right above the camera, is that light. Look, I lost some weight. I didn't actually lose weight in the last few minutes, but it definitely looks like I lost weight because it kind of just like cleans all of this up and just takes all this and shaves it down with the sculpting of the light. Yeah, so essentially what we're trying to do is to create this beauty lighting effect with this light centered, frontal, up high. So where you really see the difference is in the face. If you look at where are the shadows falling. So if you look at his neck right now, 
there's this really like kind of pleasing shadow. Hide that double chin. Heck yeah, and all this chunk right here, all this chunk hidden with shadows. I love it. It's very flattering with this softbox. You know, everything is smooth. You get a shine in both eyes so you can see the color of my eyes. So we got that beauty light from above and if it's too contrasty, you're getting too many shadows and it's a little bit too much, another common technique is to put a bounce card underneath. So first you're getting most of the light coming in from above, coming straight down to Eric's face. And then you have an additional throw that's just gonna add a little bit of fill because this light is gonna bounce off this paper and kind of just fill in a little bit of that underside if it's too contrasty. All right, so we're gonna switch over to our next lighting setup where we're gonna do an overhead lighting setup. This is a C-stand, 40 inch arm. If you're gonna do this, just be careful. One major rule of using a C-stand, big leg with the bag on it and the arm are in the same direction. If I twist this, right? Say you have a light on here and the stand's not falling over, but as soon as you pull this bag, this thing's gonna fall. Then you're talking about hurting the equipment, hurting yourself. We don't want that. Another thing is if you look at this grip head, you want the weight to be falling in the same direction as the grip head tightens. Reason being is the more that it pulls down, ideally it tightens at the head. Oh man, I actually really like this one here. <laughs> the most iconic film I could think of that kind of utilized this lighting a lot was Godfather. In fact, there's a story that talks about, you know, when Marlon Brando was on the set of The Godfather, executives were like, why can't we see their eyeball? You know, it's just dark circles around their eyes, why? The DP's response was, well, that's their character. It's this dark, sinister character. So that's what we're trying to do. One of the trickier setups to get into, but definitely looks really cool and it's still the softbox just coming straight down on him. You definitely have to be cautious of how the shadows are hitting the subject's face when you use a setup like this. And very, very slight movements will make big differences on how the shadows hit his face. Something as simple as a hat can cover just his eyes or his whole face just by a slight angle. Just like other setups, if it becomes a little bit too contrasty, you can balance it out by using either a bounce card or a silver reflecty. <laughs> so we're reflecting. That's the technical term, guys. Depending on how moody you want it to be, you can control a lot of that just with simple modifiers and reflectors and bounce cards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap this softbox out with the Fresnel, get a spotted beam. We're gonna fog it up and so you guys can see what that looks like. I don't know the specifics of a fog machine and a hazer, but hazer typically comes out softer and less like a cloud. So it's more of like an atmospheric thing. And this is a hazer I got, I think it was around 300 bucks or something like that. But the industry standards is a DF50. And I heard the difference between this and the professional DF50, which I think is a couple thousand dollars, is that the DF50 can break apart all the little particles, so you don't really see particles floating around on camera. All you do is just see like an atmosphere. So if there's lights coming through, you see a beam of it, opposed to cheaper hazers like this one where you might see some particles floating around because the particle size of the haze is much thinner and smaller on a professional grade hazer. But I don't have one of those, so we'll plug this in for now. After it spits it out, it might not always be broken up. So sometimes you have to like waft it. You don't want it to be too clumpy, so you gotta break it up by karate chop. Kill those house lights. We're gonna go uh -huh. dark. And here we go. Woohoo! You look like you're about to be abducted. Basically same setup as before, but just switched out with a Fresnel head and we got this hazer on. It might look like a little uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. So the nice thing about haze is you can create these beams of light. Whoa. That's weird. When you're in this light, you can't see anything. The light on a Fresnel directly behind the talent with a touch of haze. Oh. <laughs> this should look pretty awesome. What are you doing with my rug? I'm wafting. <laughs> Eric is gonna do his rise from the dead scene. Here we go. I'm totally editing this into a music video. With music, this is gonna not seem so awkward. <laughs> so next we're gonna utilize a technique called skip bounce. We've got our Fresnel attachment on our Aperture 120D. Now I'm gonna bring in our white bounce. 
And we're now starting to get into some niche lighting where you're not gonna wanna use this technique all the time. Since the lighting is gonna be coming from below, it's gonna be very moody and almost kinda like this flashlight look from below, but you know, this is a little bit too much and crazy. So it's kind of a mellow version of that, but generally the same characteristics and feel you get from that kind of spooky, unnatural look. But I have used this kind of lighting before in the techie space. We did a shoot for Boeing once and we had a bunch of panels that was supposed to be like graphic displays. So it can be used in a horror look, but it can also be used in like a techie environment where screens are naturally glowing up at you from below. Now, another thing that you can experiment with to get a little bit creative is actually moving the light. A little bit difficult to incorporate into narrative, but sometimes for music videos, it just looks a little bit more dynamic without moving the camera. But I've also used it for product shots where if you just slightly move the lighting around, it kind of creates this interesting feel. So what we're doing now is we're gonna try a, a silhouette. Key of this setup is to make sure that all the light goes onto the background. You try to isolate yourself from that light so you're in a dark pocket and all the light is directed towards the background and try to limit as much bounce as possible on yourself. Ultimately, we want this crisp, clean figure in our frame. That's how you really get a true silhouette. All right, so here's a pretty dramatic one. This one's lighting that comes in straight from the side and we have our five in one reflector set to the black side, which is gonna catch all this light and basically reduce any sort of a reflection that was gonna come in from the side. So when we use the bounce side of this, it becomes a fill light, but then when we use the black side, it's a negative fill, it just absorbs all that light, making this angle very, very dramatic. Any sort of black absorbent material will work. Uh, your five in one reflector will work. There's a typical type of fabric we use called duvetine or commando cloth. And the reason you do this is so you can see some of the face, but you don't see all of the face. In doing so, you create a little bit of mystery. So it adds a little bit of drama. So if you compare this to say, you know, a beauty light, you feel something different. So that's what it does with a negative fill, but we can also take that shiny board, walk it back a little bit behind the subject and we would walk it out a little bit further, but the space is just a little bit too small to do that. So that's why you can see the reflector, but you generally want that shiny reflector to be behind the subject, kind of coming in at an angle. What you're doing is you're creating layers on the face. We have our side light, then we have some shadow, then we have kind of an edge. Whenever you're working with an intense backlight, you sometimes get this issue with this like glowing ear. You basically need a tape cutting expert. <laughs> to perfectly cut out the shape of your ear. What we're using here is two inch photo black tape. No glow ear, how perfect. Especially if you have big Dumbo sized ears like me, very useful. Hollywood secrets revealed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're setting up now is typically referred to as a three quarter backlight setup. And this is pushing to give me this crisp edge along my body here. We're gonna set up a bounce on this side to return some of that light. The first time I heard about this was from a photographer who uh, utilized this kind of lighting setup outside where instead of an aperture 120D, he was using the sun, maybe around golden hour, that sort of thing. Instead of this white crisp edge that you see on me now, it was a nice golden yellow. Now we are blasting Eric's face with a really harsh light. Now he is blind. He is no longer gonna be able to work as a gap. One of the benefits of a really harsh light is that you can shape it and sculpt it into a shape or let's say you're trying to go for an artistic look where you're trying to just cut or slash part of the light. It's very easy to do when you have a Fresnel opposed to a soft light. We can also just take a harsh light and you know that middle piece in our five in one floppy? It's yeah. not a floppy. It should be called a floppy. Look how floppy it is. This is way floppier than an actual floppy. <laughs> this should be called a floppy. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what a floppy is, you, you can go look it up and you can see why I'm always laughing throughout this video at how he refers to it as a floppy. But the middle piece in our five in one reflector, you just throw that in front of the talent and all of a sudden our harsh light is nice and soft. Look how beautiful we look. Oh my God, we look gorgeous. We're hot as f we should go to the club tonight. And on the contrary, if you have a light that's already soft out of the box, then it's pretty tricky to get that into a nice, harsh, sharp light and shaping it and all that. All right, so I think that's pretty much a wrap. Thanks to Eric for coming out. We've worked on a bunch of project here in LA together. We go pretty way back. If you wanna hit up Eric for anything or have any questions, shoot him a DM on Instagram. I had a great time. I hope you learned a lot and uh, you know, 
I love to talk lighting and lighting techniques. I look forward to, you know, collaborating, communicating with you guys. Anyways, thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. I know lighting is not like the most popular topic on YouTube, even though it should be. It's one of the most important parts of making an image look cinematic. And even if you don't set up lights, the fundamentals are still the same. So when you go out and look at a naturally lit environment like this, you look around and you say, okay, that's where the sources of lights are. Think of the sun as a super harsh light, like a Fresnel. And if there's a big white wall somewhere and the sun's bashing it, then just think of that as like a big soft source. Also, I gotta apologize. A lot of that sound was kind of messed up. I don't know if you guys heard it. It's like click, click, click. And the thing is I got this microphone and I put it on top of the camera and I didn't realize I didn't tighten it down on the hot shoe enough. So if it's kind of loose on the camera and I move around the camera, you hear, is that super annoying? So after I recorded all that, I was like, crap, I gotta tighten it down. Anyways, let's read some comments from the last video. Top comment was from 1806 Stonehouse. Dude, I love your channel. You could talk about toilet paper and head listen. Well, thank you. I am actually starting a second channel all dedicated to toilet paper. And my first video is gonna be reviewing the Charmin Ultra Soft. And I highly recommend the jumbo rolls. Those rolls last you so much longer and you don't have to switch it out all the time. You don't have to deal with looking at that empty, just like brown roll thing on the inside, just barely with with any tissue on it. No, you put on a jumbo roll, it lasts you a pretty long time. Now Charmin is the brand I like to go with and Charmin, if you wanna sponsor me with unlimited toilet paper for life, that'd be fantastic. I just lost some light. That is a downside of natural lighting. It's always changing if it's a cloudy day. Good comparison video, things are looking up. <laughs> <laughs> How long is this up thing gonna last? Even your dog is in tripod mode. <laughs> Lefty up here, come on. Who's a good doggy? Who's a good dog? Hey, can you do a comparison test of the M50 with the new speed booster and the EOS R? Funny you mentioned that. I've been filming that video for the last couple of days and I think I'm just about done. I just have to edit it now. So come in later this week. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Yeah.